history. So today's lesson is going to be about history. So um, uh, first of all, uh, when it comes to history, like uh, there, everything that we see in our daily life, uh, there is a history about uh, about that thing. For example, um, a country, a city, or a museum. When you go in there, like everything that you see in there. So if you go to a museum and then you see different things in there, um, they are like old things in there that are like uh, got like. Um, they they are like hundred years uh, old so all of those uh, things that you see in there they they have a history so history of science history of physics all those things uh, so everything got in history so exchange server history is going to be the lesson uh, for for on this video and exchange server uh, like uh, had uh, different versions uh, before uh, Exchange Server 4.0, but Exchange uh, 4.0 uh, was just released uh, on uh, 11th of June 1996, as you can see in there. So it was uh, like a first application to take advantage of internet. So what what was happening at that time that internet was there, like uh, everyone was using internet. So so Exchange Server as an application was the first application to take the advantage of internet, to use the internet in a proper way, to like um, uh, b become like important part of communication. So uh, what Microsoft did, like uh, they 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 really took the advantage to just put the Exchange Server into the internet and then send and receive messages. So. Uh, that's why they are the first application to take advantage of internet. So uh, in 1996, they came up with Exchange 4.0. Um, uh, if you ask, uh, that is uh, how how about like before 1996? Before 1996, Exchange 4.0 and Exchange Mail, uh, all, all those were in use uh, internally uh, by Microsoft. So Microsoft was using Exchange Server 4.0 internally uh, before 1996, and they just released it into public uh, on. Uh, June 11th 1996 so um, and was the first version of Microsoft ex Exchange uh, which was sold to public so it was the first version of Microsoft Exchange so that's why we just started our history from here so um, if you see down in there so we got Exchange 5.0 Exchange uh, 5.0 was uh, released in uh, uh, 1997 and it was installed in Windows NT 4.0. So as you can see in there, I've got a picture for you and that's the Windows NT server uh, 4.0 uh, which uh, they were using to install Exchange Server 5.0. So uh, what I mean to say in here is like most of the Exchange versions are compatible uh, with with uh, different operating systems. So uh, if you try to install like Exchange 5.0 and there is another version that was released on the same year uh, in 1997, it was Exchange 5.5. So you cannot install it on Windows NT Workstation because it's not compatible compatible so compatibility is another important thing that you have to consider whenever you are installing an exchange server you need to make sure that what operating system is compatible with that exchange server so um, exchange 5.0 was just released uh, uh, introduced uh, in 1997 uh, and then uh, it was first used with MS Outlook 1997. So um, these days we got like Outlook uh, 2016, which is like uh, I call it like a smart Outlook because it does many features. It has any many features and f uh, functions that it, it 
does it like automatically so it's like a smart outlook but at that time it was like 97 ms outlook 97 so uh, you had to just configure your exchange 5.0 with uh, microsoft outlook uh, 97 in our future lessons we are going to learn how can we configure outlook which is like a client that you have to install in your customers or client machines so that they can access uh, microsoft exchange so uh, to send and receive emails uh, the other thing uh, was like uh, before uh, exchange 5.0 email calendaring and address book were not like tied up it was not all together but when it came to 5.0 email system calendaring system and address book address book where you got all users uh, like email addresses and information like a phone directory these days we have so all your users and mailboxes and emails are in your address book so calendaring uh, calendaring where you just uh, uh, just uh, create meetings uh, and you schedule meetings so all those scheduling things that you were doing was through calendar calendaring sorry calendaring <laughs> so um email is another thing so you you were you, you you were able to send and receive emails you were able to make appointments uh schedule schedule meetings uh, uh and then you had address books so all of them were all tied up and it was uh in in your uh, MS Outlook, Microsoft Outlook uh, 1997. And uh, the other thing that uh, you, you, you see in here is Outlook Web Access. Outlook Web Access is another way to access your email when it is configured with Exchange, and that is through browser. So accessing emails through browser, you need to use Outlook Web Access. So this uh, Outlook Web Access was first released with Exchange Server 5.0. We are going to learn a lot about Outlook Web Access, but for now, what is Outlook Web Access? It is a way to access your emails through Internet Explorer, through um, IE, or any other browser. You just have to type the address of Outlook Web Access that uh, you will configure in your Exchange server, and then once you type in you will uh, you will have to type in your username and password and then you will be able to log in send and receive emails as casual meetings uh, look for user accounts all those kind of things that you you want to do you can do so um, before I just uh, jump into exchange uh, server uh, uh, 2000 I just want to talk a little bit about exchange server 5.5 uh, uh, exchange server 5.5 was uh, the other version uh, that uh, we had uh, uh, which was released on 1997 so it was uh, coming up in two uh, flavors and one was uh, standard edition and one was enterprise edition so when it comes to standard and enterprise uh, it is with all uh, Microsoft applications operating system standard editions are always for small to medium sized businesses enterprises is for large businesses so uh, the difference between a standard and enterprise uh, version that we have in exchange server is the difference of uh, like how many databases you can create how much storage limit you have so less a storage limit with the standard edition uh, more storage limit with uh, enterprise edition you got clustering capabilities with uh, like enterprise edition uh, in in 5.5 and then the storage limit for for a standard edition was like remained unchanged from the earlier version which was 4.0 and 5.0 so they the storage limit for a standard was 16 GB so this uh, it was 16 GB this was for a standard addition for 5.5 and earlier so uh, the other thing is uh, the enterprise uh, addition was uh, like cap capable of uh, um, 
having 16 terabyte which is really big of database size database size database is where you just create your uh, mailboxes create your user accounts and like uh, all your emails and everything is stored in this database so uh, the storage limit on standard edition 16 GB on enterprise edition 16 terabyte which is a, which is a lot actually so the other thing that we have is uh, uh, Exchange Server 2003. Oh, sorry, I forgot 2000. So uh, Exchange Server 2000 was uh, one of the other uh, additions that we had, which was like an improvement from the up earlier versions. And uh, uh, you had to uh, install uh, Exchange Server 2000 on Windows Server 2000. That, this is this is uh, one of the important thing that you have to remember. So Exchange Server 2000 required uh, us to install Windows Server 2000 that you can uh, you can see that I got Microsoft Exchange Enterprise Server Edition in here. So this is how the setup was at that time. So uh, this this uh, version uh, uh, of Exchange Server 2000 was released to public on November 29th, 2000. So uh, and it, it as I said that there was like major improvements and then uh, some. Uh, limitation issues that we had with our earlier version of uh, exchange servers was just uh, uh, r removed uh, and uh, then there was some improvement made and uh, the one of the improvements that uh, they made was like it was integrated with a active directory to access user mailboxes so Back in old days, when you were uh, to create uh, a, a mailbox, uh, you had to just create. Let's let me just give you an example. Uh, if you have an Exchange server, and this Exchange server is a server where you have got no Active Directory, what you will do is you will have to create a separate user account for your Exchange server, and if you have an Active Directory. For, for login in for domain uh, you will have to create a user account separately this this is what uh, going to happen so you're gonna have two different credentials one for exchange one for AD when you ha you have uh, an exchange like I'm talking about all exchange these days exchange servers requires Active Directory if and if you don't install Active Directory you do not have Active Directory exchange server is gonna tell you hey I need Active Directory I need domain controller or I'm not gonna install so if back in old days uh, this is how uh, it was so you, two different credentials for uh, two exchange like one for exchange and one for Active Directory to login in so uh, this version was just requiring full Microsoft Active Directory infrastructure to be in place uh, so uh, previous previous versions uh, were was not like that uh, because uh, previous uh, this this version did not have any inbuilt directory services so previous version had like inbuilt directory services but this version have uh, had no inbuilt directory services that's why you had to um, you ha you had to just have microsoft active uh, directory in order to in order to do uh, the um, install of exchange server and then access uh, your uh, mailboxes and uh, your gro global address list so global address list is ba basically it is uh, actually all users and emails information so in your company when you just uh, uh, create user accounts you create like email addresses all of them are in your global address list so uh, when you check into your uh, global address list you will be able to locate all email addresses from there so uh, one of the other thing uh, th uh, that that's really good about uh, Exchange Server is like uh, it it just increased the uh, support of for number of servers in a cluster. Uh, 
uh, from two to four. So uh, you 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 were able to uh, do like two servers cluster in earlier versions. So server cluster for Exchange is used. Uh, to make sure that if one of your exchange server, for example, exchange one and exchange two, if one of your exchange server goes down, the other exchange is able to uh, take care of your mailboxes. So it's not gonna uh, give you any downtime when you're running on a production environment. So w with earlier version, there was like limitation of two clusters only but with exchange in server 2000 you it just increased to four so which means that you can have one two three four clusters uh, uh, just to do the load balancing disaster recovery solutions so if one exchange goes down you still have connectivity but uh, that's why uh, let me give you an example like uh, if you have to ex if you got one exchange server and one of your exchange server just goes down or database just get just get corrupted you your users will no longer have an access but if you have a clustering configured because it's like a load balancing failover so what you're gonna do is like you're gonna have connectivity your users are still gonna have connectivity because uh, one uh, of your exchange server is down or database is down but there's already another um, exchange uh, to uh, to take care of that that already have like a copy of uh, that so they got like same database same files same uh, users everything is same it's just doing the load balancing and failover so that's another good thing about server 2000 it just increased the limitation of uh, clustering uh, to four uh, t from two to four and uh, one of the uh, one of the other thing that we have is like active X was introduced so uh, if you uh, just I've tried sometime uh, like Outlook web access as I said it's like accessing your outlook on a web uh, so uh, you with this version you were able to drag and drop feature uh, drag and drop your email addresses for example I got an email in my inbox from John I want to drag this John to John folder I was able to do it with Exchange Server 2000 because they enabled active X feature which was uh, just uh, giving us the capability of uh, moving the things around in in your Outlook web access. So uh, I think this is really going to be interesting video. So uh, it's already 17 uh, minutes. I just don't want to make it too long. So um, I'll just uh, end this video in here and uh, we I'll continue. Uh, with Exchange Server 2003 history and uh, um, I hope that you have learned uh, something from this uh, video. Uh, please uh, let me know if you have any questions or uh, any, um, any comments uh, and thank you for uh, watching the video.